Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word that we're going to focus on this morning was the Gospel reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 21 to 40. As we get meditation on that word, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you again for the gift of the Christ child, that you came down from heaven above to earth below. There you lived for us. There you, we saw you as our Savior. Renew that joy in us day in, day out, even though Christmas has come and gone, that we still gather around your name and worship you. In your name we pray. Amen. Your friends in Christ, so hopefully, I don't know, things complicate, things can happen, but hopefully by now you've had a chance to celebrate Christmas, that you've uh, gotten to presents and opened a few and gotten to enjoy them. Maybe a, maybe a few surprises out there in your Christmas presents, and maybe some that you just want to tell people about. Some of those gifts that you got that you really wanted, that you were really hoping for, really anticipating or something totally unexpected that now is just absolutely something you love and cherish. For me, I know, uh, I've talked about this before, this is what I was going to use for the kids' message, but I'd just be preaching to my kids, so I can do that at home. Um, <laughs> the watch I wear. watch I've had, I can't even remember how many years I've had it, but I know it's less than 13 because it's one of the first Christmas gifts my wife gave me after we were married. And so every day I use that, keep track of time, know when to start service, know when to get in here on time. And something I cherish all the time. That's a Christmas gift I cherish. And hopefully there are Christmas gifts like that that you cherish, things you use all the time, and you remember how special this gift was. Where we're picking up today in the Bible, we are immediately following up the verses from that very famous Luke chapter 2, Jesus born in Bethlehem account. The angels had, uh, angels had just announced to the shepherds that today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. They rushed to Bethlehem. They found the babe in the manger just as it was told to them. And then they went out and told as many people as they could. And they came back and worshipped him again. Because now Christ had been revealed to them. They knew the Messiah. They had to tell people. They couldn't keep the joy in. And of course, it ends on saying, and Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Well, we know in a much, much more subtle, maybe a little bit more laid back way, we would say, the story continues. It's now Jesus' eighth day. So he's been, been in this world as a baby out of the womb, eight days. On the eighth day, per Jewish custom, you would have the child circumcised, which that in and of itself is a pretty neat thing, this custom, this tradition that had come from Abraham some 2,000 years before Jesus was born, recognizing the promise that God had gave to Abraham that through your offspring, I would bless all nations. Jesus is the one who finally fulfills the sign of that covenant of circumcision. And even by being circumcised, believe it or not, Jesus shed his blood for you. We tend not to think of that. We tend to just think of the cross, think of the crucifixion, but even there, he sheds his blood in keeping God's law and keeping his word to be circumcised on the eighth day as God commanded it. And then furthermore, Mary and Joseph show their faith that they know this child that they have because they name him Jesus. The one as explained to Joseph means he saves. Jesus, the name angel Gabriel said this child would have. Mary and Joseph reveled in this fact that here is our baby boy who is also the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was promised from so long ago. He has come into the world, putting their trust simply in this act of circumcision and naming him Jesus. And then as they continued to keep the law, they were good godly parents, they went on after 40 days of Jesus being born by the law of Moses, by God's law, you had to present this firstborn child to the temple and there offer a sacrifice to redeem him, to buy him back because the firstborn child was always supposed to be consecrated, set apart for the Lord. 
So there they come with their offering to say flat out by, by their worship, yes, Jesus is set aside to serve you, God. He's not truly ours. He is yours. And so we give the appropriate sacrifices and offerings that you have commanded. So even in 40 days of being on the earth, Jesus has already been keeping God's law for us in our place. The Christ has been unwrapped and revealed to Mary and Joseph. They know this is the one who saves us. Well, there happened that day, not really happened, as we find out, but there was a man at the temple, his name is Simeon, and not just there by coincidence, he was there because it had been revealed to him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And so it was the Holy Spirit guiding Simeon directly to go up to Mary and Joseph, who were carrying this baby, and with this little infant, there he picks him up, scoops him in his arms, and he declares that song of praise, we call it by the Latin phrase, the nunc divinus, which is the first phrases, let your servant depart, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. This is the one. This is the one I've been waiting for, God. This is the one you had promised to me. This is the one that my people have put our hope in for generations upon generations. God, I can die happy. Let me go now in peace. Because I have seen your salvation, which you prepared for all people, Jew and Gentile alike. It's this child right here, right now at the temple. This is my Savior revealed, unwrapped, shown to the world for what he is. And Simeon didn't do this quietly. Simeon didn't just whisper these words. But he spoke this so loud that other people noticed, even one of them being this woman, Anna. Anna, who is an elderly woman from the tribe of Asher. She had lived a long life, but very few of those years with her husband. She's one of those people that you can't help but admire that in all these years where she had been a widow, this is how she described it. She is described as she never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. She overhears Simeon. She comes up too. She sees this boy. She has heard this is the salvation prepared for the, for the world. She praises and thanks God. She goes around and then fulfills that other part of who she is. She's called a prophetess meaning she proclaims the word of God. She went around and told people there in the temple courts, this is the one we've been waiting for. This is the one who will redeem Jerusalem, who will buy us back from the slavery of sin, for our slavery to the devil, to death. He is going to rescue us. This is the one we've been waiting for. And they just could not contain the joy because here is Christ revealed and unwrapped to them. And they rejoice. They can't do anything but rejoice. This was the first time Christ was revealed to Simeon, to Anna. And it just bubbled up out of their heart, over their lips, to praise and thank God, to now be content that he has fulfilled his promise. They know their Savior. They've seen him. You know, we've been revealing, unwrapping Jesus here over the last week. It's kind of hard already to believe it. Christmas wasn't even a week ago. That was, that was Tuesday. But yet, starting last Sunday, particularly with the, the kids, the children's program, the Jesse tree, learning about these promises that were handed down from Abraham to Isaac, Jacob, to King David, all the way to there, where he's born to Mary and Joseph as a baby in Bethlehem. They had seen the gift for so long, but it was still concealed, still waiting, still waiting for the day to unwrap it. And then that day came, the, the shepherds rejoiced, Mary and Joseph humbly 
thanked God and accepted this is our Savior. And Simeon and Anna praise him because this is their first time getting that gift, getting to unwrap that gift. They couldn't help but explode with joy. How about us? We had that gift unwrapped through the kids' message. We had the Jesus, the God, come down, made human flesh on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Has your joy been just bubbling up, bursting forth? This is the child. This is the one we've been waiting for. As, or are you kind of like maybe some of your other gifts? Like, That's nice. You just put it off to a shelf. Or, hey, I got that last year. And it feels a little diminished. The joy, not explosive. Not something that makes me want to, to sing. But just so home. You know, seen it. You know, I know for myself, I don't remember a time in my life where I haven't known the unwrapped and revealed gift of Jesus Christ as my Savior. I was baptized within a month of being born. I grew up in a Lutheran church. I went to Lutheran schools. I became a Lutheran pastor. I don't know of a time where I haven't had this gift. And so almost by having it for so long, sometimes a complacency comes in where you, you kind of forget how great and wonderful this gift is because I've just had it for so long. You know, Simeon said more to Mary, more than just thanking God and praising Him that now my Savior has been revealed, but he also said, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. If we think about my thoughts, my heart about this gift of the Christ child, this unwrapped and revealed Jesus, do I still have that joy that Simeon and Anna had? Or has my joy become muted? What has Christ revealed about my heart? You know, Luke when he wrote this gospel account, he starts off at the very first verses saying, there's a reason why I'm writing this. He's writing it actually to a very specific person named Theophilus, saying, I'm writing this to you so that you may know the certainty of the things that you have been taught. So Luke is recording these words for us so that today, part of what we're supposed to hear is just to have certainty, to know that God really did come down from heaven. He really did take on human flesh. And then, yep, even as a baby, eight days old, 40 days old, he is keeping God's law for you, even through circumcision, shedding blood for you, all in keeping with the word of God. A baby is being the perfection that we cannot be. So truly, this Jesus is the Savior of the world, the consolation of Israel, the redemption of Jerusalem, the one who buys us back from sin, death, and the power of devil, the one who truly, as his name says, saves. Luke wants us to know that with certainty. This is our Savior, even as a baby, fulfilling his role for you. But there's another reason why Luke would have recorded this for us. Now, I know we all vary into how long we've known Jesus, how long we've, we've reveled in this unwrapped and revealed gift of the Christ child. But there's something about seeing the people unwrap him for the first time. To hear Simeon's reaction. To hear Anna's joy. That in these moments you hear these people for the first time unwrapping the gift of Jesus and then the praises just come forth and to think like Simeon and it reminds me of the joy that I have that Christ has come. My joy is Simeon's joy. Lord, I can die happy. 
Because you have come, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the face of all people, a light for revelation for the Gentiles and the glory of your people in Israel. You did that for me. This is my Savior given for me. I am so happy, so thrilled, and again, because I see it through the people who unwrap Jesus for the first time. It reminds us again of what that's like. It reminds us again of the utter joy we actually do have day in and day out, and sometimes, and wrongfully, I take it a little for granted, I get a little ho-hum about it, I take it as almost commonplace because I've known it for so long. But then when you see it through the eyes of Simeon and Anna, you're reminded once again how great, how wonderful this thing is, how great this gift of the Christ is to us. So today for us to rejoice to sing those praises, to let that joy bubble up out of our hearts, over our lips, to declare to people, do you know the gift that I have today? I have the Christ. I have the Messiah. I have the one who has been revealed to me, the one to take away my sins, the one who saves me from sin, death, and the devil. This is a gift for all eternity. This is the best gift I could ever have. Can I show it to you? Can I show you this Christ, just like Simeon, just like Anna? If that's not enough, if that's not enough today to do it for you, and you're still thinking, well, I'd like to have that same joy, then I have another recommendation for you. Probably end of January, beginning of February, somewhere in there, I'll start another Bible information class. It's our new member course where people come, and you know that's one of the things that always reminds me of the joy of the unwrapped and revealed Christ, is when you come and unfolding from the scriptures, you show people again, this is all about him. This is all about what he has done for you and me. This is how he has come for the savior of the world. This brings me that same joy that as you walk out of those classes and you've seen the reaction on people's faces as things start to turn and, and as they get it and they get to revel once again, Lord, you can let me go now. Let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for the face of all people. That's what we get to revel in today. Christ unwrapped and revealed for us. And seeing it through the eyes of Simeon and Anna, we know not only is this Savior the one who kept God's word for us, the one who is keeping his law for us right now, and he would grow up to continue to do so, but he is my consolation. He is my redemption. He is my Savior. God has given me this great and eternal gift in the Christ child, it's an unwrapped, revealed gift that we get to enjoy every single day. That means it's Christmas every single day for us because we have the gift of a Savior, the Christ child revealed and unwrapped for us. May we have that joy bubble up and come over our lips as we tell others about him and see that joy in others knowing we have this gift from God. Amen. Please do. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.